so we are doing chapter 13 in five minutes. And we're going to start off with models of matter. Um, we're just going to be right here starting at the molecular model, okay? We'll get back to this poster in another video. All right, so the molecular model um, helps to explain something called Brownian motion. So one time, this scientist named Robert Brown put some pollen grains in some water, and he noticed that these grains would sometimes just twitch for some reason with no real, re um, with no real explanation to the twitching. This led him to discover that um, molecules make up everything, and the reason those were moving is because they were molecules, or made of molecules. Um, so, this molecular model has four assumptions to it. The first one is that all matter is made of particles. Two, different matter is made of different particles. If you have some wood versus some metal, the wood is going to be um, made of different particles as the metal is made of. Okay, next is these uh, particles are in constant motion. Depending on how fast they're moving or the way they're moving, they're going to have different properties to them. Um, and the last one is Newton's laws. So, um, these particles have to obey Newton's laws, they'll have acceleration, forces, things like that. Okay? So, um, this helps to explain a lot of stuff that we went over um, the last chapter, like solids, liquids, gases, their different densities and the different properties that they carry. So, there's a lot of insights that this model gives us. We're going to start off with kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy, you can see down here, is a combination of mass and speed. So, if you have a greater mass, you're going to have a greater kinetic energy. Also, if you have a greater speed or velocity, which is speed plus direction, you're going to have a greater kinetic energy. Um, to illustrate that, um, we have a train and an ant. Now, this train isn't going very slow, but it still has a pretty high kinetic energy because of its mass, which is big. Now, this little ant, he has, a, um, let's say he's like running his little heart out. And so he's going as fast as he can, but his mass is not that big. And so in order to get a kinetic energy equal to the train, he has to be basically running his heart out and probably doesn't even have the same. Now, with a greater kinetic energy, we have a greater temperature. So as these molecules are moving faster, the temperature will increase. So we have a thermometer in some water here. And um, these different particles are moving. Let's say that the water is really hot. Um, if it's hot, the particles are moving fast. If it's cold, the particles aren't moving fast. So they're moving fast. The water's hot. And these um, start moving, and uh, we have conduction here between the water and the solid here, which makes the solid move. And then it's going to go into the liquid and make the liquid start vibrating. This liquid is going to shoot up the thermometer and tell us the temperature. The hotter it is, the more they vibrate, and the higher it goes up. Okay? And... I think that's all on kinetic energy. Next, we're going to move to pressure. So there's a few things that affect the pressure of a gas. The number of molecules is one of them. So if we have more molecules filling up a certain amount of space, they, there's going to be a greater pressure. There's not as much room for them to move around. The next one is their movement and temperature. If they're moving faster, you're going to have a greater pressure. Also is the space to move. Depending on how much space they have, or if it's being pushed down a lot, if their space is um, decrease, that's going to increase the pressure and therefore the temperature. So, um, as we talked about last chapter, um, there's solids, liquids, and gases, and we get phase changes between those. This graph over here helps to illustrate kind of the, um, the way the temperature works with the phase change. So on the left, we have average kinetic energy, which is the temperature, and then just over time our energy. So, we start off here with a solid, and we're going to increase the temperature Increase, 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 right? And then, all of a sudden, we have this really hot solid. And it reaches this point where it's going to start to turn into a liquid. Once it starts that process, the energy that was going in to increasing that temperature is now going to go in to changing this into a liquid. So, instead of increasing the temperature, we have this mushy phase, kind of, where half of it's solid, half of it's liquid, because everything's going into that temperature change. It's going to be the same temperature the whole time it's changing. Once everything is turned into a liquid again, we can start increasing the temperature. So the temperature will increase until it starts turning into a gas. It's going to stay at this temperature until it's all a gas, and then the temperature can continue to increase.